It's a cutthroat competition where each year the best of the best square off, where competitors show off skills that boggle the mind and regularly shatter world records. They're not running faster or jumping higher, they're remembering more. It's the U.S. Memoriad, the National Championship of Memory. Keith Morrison recently discovered some of the surprising secrets to their total recall. Nine of hearts, the king of hearts, the ace of hearts. Tatiana Seven Cooley is one of those rare people um, with a remarkable memory. Ten of clubs. She is recalling the order of a shuffled of deck clubs. of cards that you looked at for just a few minutes. The eight of hearts. It certainly the seems to be an astonishing feat. This woman seems to have a photographic memory. And not only that, she's modest about it. I'm just like everybody else. Anybody can do this. Tatiana swears she doesn't have any supernatural memory powers. Okay. Give me a call when you get a chance. At her internet job, she relies on a Palm Pilot to keep track of meetings and appointments. But put her memory to the test, a real test, and she does seem supernatural. Tatiana is the three-time winner of the U.S. Memoriad Contest, a sort of memorizing Olympics. She added her first competition in 1998 on a whim after reading an ad for the event. I thought, wouldn't that be fun? I could go and compare my memory, because I think I have a good memory, but let's see how it compares to other people. I see. And I won the damn thing, and I never expected to. Tatiana is back this year to defend her title against 18 others, including this man, Scott Hagwood, who spent a full year preparing for the contest, doing memory exercises to keep his mind healthy as his body battled thyroid cancer. I'd be sitting out there in the waiting room, you know, waiting for the next treatment or whatever, and I'd just be taking a deck of cards and just kind of going through it to make sure that I could remember. The competition is intense. Seven hours of mental gymnastics, memorizing 99 names and faces, 500 random words, rows and rows of single digits. Tatiana is in true form. With just one event to go, she's in first place. How does she do it? We asked her to show us, taking a deck of shuffled cards and studying them for five minutes, long enough for her to take in 18 cards, which she ticked off without a mistake. Her secret? Giving each card a code word. This two of diamonds is not the two of diamonds to me. It's den. Oh, all right. So that's how this works. So you go through the cards and you create a story. Tatiana says it's easy once you get the hang of it. Take six of hearts, for example. Tatiana assigns it the word hash. Why hash? Well, in a system she picked up from these books, the first letter tells her the suit of the card. In this case, H for hearts. The SH is code for the number six. Hash becomes the six of hearts. And the story Tatiana created for those cards? The hash and the hag in the sack are dazed the sash and the hub. It all seems very confusing, but Tatiana says it works for her, and memory experts agree it's all about coming up with a coding system, developing a sort of filing cabinet in your brain. But, says Tatiana, these things do take effort. Be it at work or at home, I make a conscious effort to um, do some kind of memorization of something. Our research shows that if you take an individual you can improve the memory performance in, in virtually any areas of, of, of a memory task. Florida State psychology professor Anders Erickson has spent years studying superior memory. You're saying that almost anybody can engage in feats of memory that they may not have thought possible. And there are factors like how much you know and how interested you are in an area. In the subject that you're trying right. to memorize. Like for example, you know, some Adolescents have no problems remembering scores between a a athletic teams, but they have tremendous difficulty remembering even a single date in history class. How important to memory is that meaningful connection in your so mind? Dr. Erickson said he would show us with help from a graduate student named Rajan, who happens to love numbers. You could just go row by row like this. While Rajan steps out of the room, Dr. Erickson asks students to call out the last digit of their social security numbers, creating a matrix for Rajan to recall. Zero. After all of a minute and ten seconds studying the 36 digits. Okay, I'm done. Rajan is ready to recall the numbers. 
5631974703776233988 How does he do it? Like Tatiana, Rajan has encoded the numbers into sequences that are meaningful for him, making a story of sorts from the numbers. 470, uh, that was the sa starting salary of a friend I knew uh, in India. <laughs> 820 is something embarrassing. I did something at 8.20 a.m. this morning. I don't want to tell you about. A clever trick that, according to Dr. Erickson, suggests that there is no such thing as a truly photographic uh, so memory, here, just people with good memory kilometers. techniques. I don't think there's any credible evidence whatsoever for photographic memory. I've spent about five years trying to find even a single individual who would come close. Diagonal from the top left to the bottom right. Uh, five, seven. To make his point, Dr. Erickson asks Rajan three, to recall the numbers diagonally. It takes Rajan nine, longer than when he recalls them in order. Three. That's because Rajan is not seeing a picture of the matrix in his mind at all. He's recalling the meaningful sequences one by one. Okay, when you hear the beeper go off. To show just how important it is to have things make sense, in being able to remember them. Please start. Dr. Erickson and his colleagues run experiments like this one. This champion chess player is given five seconds to look at a chessboard whose pieces are positioned as they would be in a match. Then he's given two minutes to reproduce the positions, which he does almost perfectly. But when he spends the same amount of time looking at a chessboard in which the pieces are placed randomly, he has trouble remembering the placement of almost any of them. Why? One board had meaning to this chess master, the other did not. Looking for meaning in any kind of activity is a very effective way now of improving your memory for it. In fact, it may be hardwired in our brains. Scientists are now peering inside the brain to find out exactly how memories are formed. All you have to do is stay absolutely still. In experiments like this one, Harvard University researchers had test subjects go through an MRI that scans their brain as they're shown a list of words. Okay, if you're doing fine, please squeeze the squeeze ball. The researchers found two specific areas of the brain, the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe, show increased activity when people focus on the meaning of words. The more activity, the more likely the person is to remember those words later on. Again, it all comes down to attaching meaning. People need to be aware here that they control a lot more of their abilities and, and their life than maybe some of them think. As for Tatiana, she scored her personal best at last month's Memoriad. But, in a surprise upset, it was not enough to beat Scott Hagwood. 411 points, Scott Hagwood! With a solid year of practice behind him and the strong belief that great memories are not born. They're made.